Good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Ravi. I am working as a scientist in Center for Ocean Research. Today, we are going to see about the characterization and DNA barcoding of polychaetes. The DNA barcoding is the technology to identify the, it, it's the advanced technology to identify the genus and species of any animals or living things. DNA barcoding is the technology uh, is comes under the molecular biology okay but ancient people they won't use the, this technology they use only the morphological identification that is called the conventional taxonomical identification the taxonomical identification is the backbone for dna barcoding without taxonomical identification we cannot go or move further for DNA barcoding. It is very basic. The whatever the technology may come, the even uh, NGS, the next generation, if come, we need uh, very basic information on taxonomy. The morphological identification is is the key. So now. We are going to see what is taxonomy. The taxonomy is the science of naming and classifying things. Uh, uh, These things are uh, very uh, older, okay? But we need to understand where we are, why we need this basic taxonomy, okay? In biology, this refers to organize the species into different groups. So we can see the what what all the groups we have. Okay. Uh, his uh, cor coral lineus. He is the scientist uh, from Sweden, uh, and he is a botanist, zoologist and physician, physician, he developed a yeah, uh, strategies called linear classification system. Uh, this is a uh, linear classification system. He developed like a domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. You can see the images here. We have two different animals. It is, it, these animals are look like different, but these two animals are come under the same genus, but species are different. So for uh, another example is for Homo sapiens. This is also, and we, we just go in depth, okay? Uh, this is called devil cat and ghost and mountain lion, screaming cat, boomer and panther. This are, this all the animals comes under the cat or something. Okay. Uh, there are many common names for the animal shown on the previous slides. Common names are vary according to region, uh, environment, and physical behaviors. But uh, depends on this uh, characters, the people are used to give the name, genus and species. The genus are similar, the species may be vary. Okay. Linus also introduced the methods of scientific naming called nomenclature. He identified each organism by using common of its genus and species. 
he made sure that no two creature had the same combination of genus and species he used latin language for the genus and species identification and mostly the uh, a genus name was always used lacking noun for the a noun and the species for was a, a lacking adjective okay uh, this is called the uh, six kingdom okay the since linus time there was been frequent debate about how many kingdoms are needed the linus recognized two kingdoms one plant and animal later the scientists are separated the fungi and plants when microscopic organism were, di uh, were discovered they were added the kingdom protista which bacteria we first added in monera but the divided monera into eubacteria and archaebacteria this is classification of animals the animal is classified into vertebrates and invertebrates the vertebrates reptile fish amphibians birds and mammals the vertebrates are worms arthropods and invertebrates like crustacean insects arthropo uh, others the polychaetes also comes under invertebrates especially worms okay uh, this is uh, sub kingdoms of invertebrates sponges canidians worms three pile to of worms the for example flat worms round worms segmented worms basically the worms body structure is like a bilateral it is organized by cell to tissue tissue to organs organ to simple organ systems it can reproduce by sexually or an asexual asexual it developed by uh, zygote to egg egg to cocoon cocoon to adult and flat worms all over the world the flat worms are more than 10000 species are available the most of the parasites are most of the flat worms are parasites for example tape worms are uh, uh, live in the intestine of the human body or animals so it like a parasite and liver folks some flat worms are uh, live uh, it's like a non parasitic types also it's available round worms round worms also the parasite they use the human body to stay alive feed and produce yeah round worm infection does not turn to cause any notable symptoms the, the most of the round worms are the very familiar round worms are the eye infecting round worms it easily present in eye but we can't uh, the the person infected person uh, they cannot uh, recognize the worms inside our eyes or not this is segmented worms the species exit and have adapted to various ecology some in marine environment as distinct as tidal zone and hydroxyl vents other in fresh water and eight others in other traditional traditional uh, environments the polychaetes also comes under segmented worms the most of the 
marine segmented worms of the annelids class the polychaete also the characterized by having more segmented which one pair of lateral fleshy loop like appendages called parapodia with numerous seta projecting from them the fact that segmented have bundle of skeeta have lead to polychaetes sometimes being referred to as brittle worms some seasonal forms may have the parapodia reduced or absent polychaeta is very large and diverse class with more than uh, 15000 species range in length from less than 2 mm to 5 uh, sorry 3 uh, meters this is called uh, subclass we have the different subclasses and the feeding behavior also uh, include the uh, rap rapidly the some worms are like uh, carnivores herbivores herbivores some uh, some polychaetes are scavengers the uh, it is like it act like a deposit feeding filter feeding and uh, suspension feeding uh, some form or brightly colored some respectively include the log worms and the sand worms com worms polychaetes are found worldwide in all marine habitats from popular to uh, sorry uh, and tropical regions and some live in fresh water some live in uh, brackish water polychaetes play may play uh, it play uh, uh, an important role in marine food chain and or preyed upon by other invertebrates it's like fish and birds this polychaetes that are part of uh, bangles not only are important in benthic food chain but also help in recycling of organic matters the for human the polychaetes are used as bite for recreational fishing and as indicator for monitoring the health of the environment the many more suborders than the layout presented here as comparatively few polychaetes and uh, taxa have been subject to analysis some groups which are usually considered invalid today may eventually be reinstated this is a uh, general anatomy of a uh, polychaete uh, as annelid the polychaete have true segments anterior to the true segment like the pro uh, prostodium and peristodium prostodium and peristodium prostodium and peristodium here this eight region of two segment typically contain two pair of eyes here three antennae the mostly it may be present i will show you the later here maybe here like this okay and several tentacles tentacles means this one here the the salt called tentacles several tentacles a yeah, pair of uh, pouts and the mouth part okay the polychaete have well developed head compared to other annelids the posterior to the true segment is pedium this last segment or tail is where the anus is located the polychaetes parents like 
highly vacuolated parapodia are used to move and act the annelid's primary respiratory surface the body of the polychaete varies from the light tan to opaque including red pink green yellow and uh, sometimes the combination of colors and uh, uh, some of uh, form uh, like a, a fluorescent a uh, luminant, uh, luminant uh, color i like to uh, share some of video we taken from our in uh, our lab our center uh, this is this form we uh, collected from uh, adr uh, stories uh, why we are sharing this uh, uh, this video means i like to show the how the internal organs are arranged in the polychaete worm okay it's not playing So can I reshare? Yes, sir. You can reshare. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can see now. actually unfortunately this worm was uh, cut uh, uh, due to the transport you can see the food particle inside the stomach here we have some other videos uh, it have the how to remove the food particles from the stomach and uh, we have another video for how to uh, lay the eggs from the body we have the several videos uh, uh, i will share next uh, occasion uh, from this presentation okay next Uh, taxonomy help to know the diversity of living organisms and better knowledge in taxonomy leads to better understanding and utilization of uh, bio resource globally uh, this is the some of uh, what uh, uh, some of the polychaetes from a uh, deep sea uh, okay and Uh, the ability of the accurately identify species is fundamental to ecological research and environmental monitoring many cryptic species describe uh, descriptions uh, depends on very specific uh, complex structure components those identification require close and time consuming uh, viewing of structure under the microscope therefore accurate uh, species identification is very much essential as part of the biological diversity in in this view of that uh, it is uh, well understood that the conventional taxonomy identification are oriented towards the molecular techniques in the area of to uh, taxonomy now 
we are going to see about the uh, DNA barcoding. Okay. Uh, what is DNA barcoding? Is the very basic question. The DNA barco barcoding is a system for fast and accurate species identification that make ecological system more accessible to use short DNA sequence in, in, instead of the whole uh, genome identification. The short DNA sequence is synthesized from standard region of uh, uh, my, micro, mitochondrial mitochondrial region. Uh, this marker is uh, different for various species like uh, uh, CYBA1 gene, the cytochrome C oxidase 1 gene. The DNA uh, barcoding have many applications in various fields like uh, preserving natural resources, uh, protecting the endangered species, controlling agriculture pest and identification disease vectors, monitoring water quality and identification of medical plants. Okay, the DNA barcode is a short DNA sequence made up of uh, 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 four uh, important, uh, four basic uh, nucleotides like uh, adenine, uh, thiamine, uh, uh, cytosine and guanine. The, the uh, two main uses of uh, DNA barcoding is one, the identification of uh, species by in global uh, level and uh, discovery of uh, new species. And uh, uh, this technology is used to uh, uh, speed up the discovering of the uh, um, remaining biodiversity. If, uh, actually, uh, the, the uh, Barcoding Institute of Ontario from Canada, they're developing uh, technology to use to uh, easily, uh, this, this device is used to easily identify the DNA uh, species, uh, genus and species. They are trying to uh, store uh, more than uh, uh, we don't have to count. They are adding the everyday life. They are adding the many sequences inside the equipment. They uh, this if we have this equipment, we can easily find the any kind of uh, animals, plant, and fungus or any other uh, organism. So they are trying to developing this technology, but it's. Very good. It is still in the under process. The DNA uh, barcoding with the uh, uh, CO1 gene. Uh, why we using this gene is the, it present in all kind of eukaryotes containing uh, containing mitochondrial uh, region. The CO1 encodes the mitochondrial protein. It needed for a cell to make a energy like ATP. And CO1 is almost identical within a species, but that varies between the different species. Some arguments are going uh, uh, in between the scientists, but the, that uh, CO1 gene is used for animal barcoding. Uh, this is the uh, uh, barcoding uh, barcoding uh, site to deposit our sequence. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the NCBS, NCBI and EMBI, EMBL, they don't accept, recently they won't accept the DNA uh, barcoding sequence, sequences. Uh, the mostly the BOLD system and the DDBJ, they're accepting the, uh, our sequence data. Uh, it is not easy to submit our sequence data into the uh, 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 the bold system or any other system. We need uh, more information on uh, on the sequence. I will explain in detail now. Okay, uh, this is uh, what we are doing in our lab: the characterization and DNA barcoding of polyketes. Uh, this is very uh, simple abstract of uh, the, uh, the metrology. 
once we collect the polycate samples from uh, uh, environment, we directly shifted to uh, our uh, shifted to lab and uh, do the uh, identification by micro microscopical identification and go for DNA extraction and PCR sequencing, then go for submission. Uh, I, I will show the one small uh, experiment uh, in my lab. Uh, this is the place called Yenur Stories. We have collected the different samples from here. Uh, with the help of a cap sampler and a core collector to use to collect the mud samples will be sieved through 0 0.5 mm space screening and the animals retained in it will be carefully removed and preserved in 5 to 7 percent formalin. For molecular study the sample uh, we will also be stored at 4 degrees Celsius in 95% ethanol. The polykits will be identified by uh, standard books and field guides, electronic keys, and uh, articles published by scientists. Okay. Uh, once we collect the samples, we just transfer our polykits and uh, do, do the uh, this, this result, uh, we won't publish this result. We are preparing uh, under the, uh, the manuscript under the process. So I'm not able to show clearly. Uh, this, uh, this is the external characters of the uh, polycates. We have studied about the, uh, the head region of the polycate and uh, uh, the uh, other aspects like uh, the anterior part and uh, the ventral view and uh, the mouth part of the, uh, uh, the polychid, uh, this uh, key points are, uh, it will give the basic information on the genus level identification. We have find these characters maybe uh, comes under the Morphysa family. Then uh, we go, we went for the very fine keys like uh, 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 key key tape. Uh, for example, the, I already uh, uh, explained about the polychids are having a lot of ketase. It's like uh, more than 300 or 400. Okay, So we have to find each and every ketase where it is, uh, these keys are present. So uh, the, uh, for example, here we used to uh, study in the 16th ketogen and uh, 2 10th ketogen and 2 98th ketogen. So, it, uh, the, whenever we go for the taxonomical identification, the single species it will take the at least uh, seven to ten days for uh, a taxonomical identification itself. So without this information, we cannot go for the molecular identification. If we identify the molecular identification, we have we will get the result, but it won't help us for uh, DNA barcoding. Then. The immediately the DNA will be collected and extracted with the uh, coagin DNA extraction kit. They they will provide the uh, exact uh, the protocol for uh, we just follow the uh, what are the protocol they given by for the kit. Uh, we just follow the kit protocol and extract the DNA. Once we extract the DNA, we just go uh, go with uh, uh, already published. Uh, several primers are available. This primer are we are uh, using. He, this paper was published by the Sivaraj et al. 2016. Uh, this uh, this all the primers are working very well against uh, uh, polychids, marine polychids in our region. Okay, uh, this is a PCR uh, program uh, we are using. Like uh, three steps: uh, the initial uh, denaturation and the and uh, uh, PCR cycles like uh, 32, 35 cycles we are we are using at the same time the annealing temperature also 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, we are we used to get the results because uh, the each and every polychids are having the specific temperature. We won't we don't know so we used to run the uh, gradient PCR every time uh, we will standardize the each and every 
uh, samples by the different temperature or different uh, kind of uh, cycling and uh, many things are involved uh, involved to ident uh, standardize the uh, uh, PCR. The PCR amplification itself uh, very challenging to uh, challenging for us. Uh, uh, if we get the uh, animal, we started to uh, extract the DNA, but this DNA with uh, we playing more than one one week for identifying the uh, for isolating for amplifying the exact DNA uh, size. Okay. And then after uh, a PCR, we just run the, our agrosteel electroporosis. Uh, we will get the CVO1 gene uh, size comes around the 720 base per. And then uh, with the uh, with the, with this clear band, we just cut the band and elute uh, elute the PCR product and send it for sequencing. After we get the sequencing, we just uh, do the blast and uh, what are all the sequence we uh, getting that sequence used to uh, construct the phylogenetic uh, analysis, phylogenetic tree with the help of mega software. Uh, with the help of bio software, after we get the sequencing, we just confirm that this uh, polykids comes under Marpaise Mar and Sangoni. Uh, uh, this is what uh, we done uh, the one worm wa wa how we confirm this genus and species uh, this uh, this is the basic tool for us to uh, submit our dna power coding uh, data uh, but at present we don't have the ncba uh, 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 service uh, we have only the uh, bold system in this bold system we need to do before we going to submit our our sequence, we need a lot of uh, basic information or about the, our samples, like uh, uh, where we collect our sample, our our sample nature, and uh, physiochemical parameters of the our in, the environment, and uh, uh, who collected the samples, and we need to include the longitude and latitude also, and. Uh, after that, uh, we, we need uh, all the photography of uh, the keys, polykit keys. That is very important uh, uh, a thing to identify the uh, sample. And, uh, and one more thing is after we identify all our uh, taxonomical classification, then we, we need to submit our samples into uh, 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 into regional uh, reference laboratory like uh, uh, ZSI. They are the only reference laboratory. They will provide the uh, accession number for uh, a specimen uh, voucher number. They will provide the specimen voucher number. Without for specimen voucher number, we cannot uh, 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 get uh, DNA barcode. So we need the uh, voucher number also. And uh, another thing is, uh, yeah, uh, these are all the things is very important at the same time. Uh, whenever we do the uh, sequencing, DNA sequencing, we, we will get, sometimes we will get the good results. Sometimes we won't get the good results. The, uh, the many uh, uh, sequencing error may be occur. In that case, we, uh, this uh, platform, it won't accept the sequence. They, they, suggest, uh, they will suggest as we will run once again. So it is very uh, difficult process to do in uh, a bold system, but uh, they are very standard. Okay. Uh, if we start to submit our uh, single sequence, it will take 15 to one month. Uh, for get the DNA barcode. Once we provide all the information to them, they will advise, they frequently mail us. It is not like a uh, one day process. We need to uh, pro uh, follow up every day, uh, one every day. So it is, uh, uh, it is not, uh, it's not like a publication uh, uh, 
submission. This is uh, different from publication. So every day, the first we need to submit the taxonomical uh, informations. They will ref they will uh, analyze the taxonomical uh, uh, keys and they will do all the uh, routine works. So they they need at least 10 to 50 days for taxonomical key identification itself. They have the separate team. They will do everything. Uh -huh. If they have any requirement, they will uh, they will ask the query. Uh, we need to follow everything. So uh, it, it will take a very long, uh, but they will respond immediately whatever we need. So uh, the bowl system is free of cost. We no need to pay anything. We, if we have all the information, we can directly go to uh, a board system uh, website and we can register our login and uh, we do our, uh, uh, our experiment. Okay. Uh, after we finish all these things out, uh, after we submit all the things, uh, uh, they will provide us, uh, provide the DNA barcode. DNA barcode is like this. Okay, they will provide the sequence ID. They uh, and uh, one more thing, they will provide the uh, DOI number also for uh, uh, DNA barcoding. Okay, the, this barcoding system also it's considered like a, a publication one. Only. Okay. Thank you. If if you want to do the, any kind of uh, DNA barcoding. Uh, Experiment. Uh, I will help you to how to submit the bold system, how to process everything. I will uh, help you. Please contact us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ramani, sir. Uh, it's a wonderful presentation. Uh, uh, if uh, anybody want to interact with Ravi, sir, please uh, use the raise hand option and uh, we are unmute you to interact with him. Or you can post your questions in the chat box. Sir, there is one question. I'll uh, unmute. I think uh, Dr. Ansari, he had a eyes sign. So just unmute him and yes. let him interact with you. I think it is audible. It's audible. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ravi. Uh, I have only one small doubt uh, regarding this because I am the duty first. So I have a small doubt. Uh, do you use that universal primer for quality uh, or any species specific primer? Uh, I don't think. Uh, uh, Dr. Sivaraj, he is also participating in this uh, FDP. Uh, Sivaraj is not used any uh, species specific primer. I think he used for the universal primer. Is that right? It's audible? Ravi? Yes, sir. It's audible, sir. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Me? Uh, Actually, yes. in my place, I had a power cut. So, so okay. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, there is a question from Dr. Ansari. He wants to know whether it is an you used any universal primer or uh, any species species specific primer. As you shown uh, Dr. Sivaraj uh, uh, paper as the reference, he said he also used the universal primer. So, what is your answer for that? Yes, I, I used only the universal primers only. These primers already, the, several peoples are used. So recently, the Sivaraj et al, he, he, he also the, followed the same protocol. So in my paper, in my future study also, I just follow the same. So uh, because uh, why I'm telling is, I'm getting very good results from these uh, primers. And one more question from uh, Dr. Lata Ratnam. Uh, she wants to know uh, what is the voucher number? What what it mean? 
nothing ma'am uh, voucher number uh, given by the zoological survey uh, uh, once you collect the samples you just prepare the specimen okay a specimen is like a, a specimen is like a, the a bottle or a, you can prepare like a slides or anything once we prepare and you just do the your taxonomical classification in your lab once finish your taxonomical classification you have to reconfirm with zoologic uh, uh, with the zoologist because they have the expertise in the uh, institute they will reconfirm and they will provide the voucher number this is this species this uh, polychaetes comes under marpaisa uh, sangani if they giving this uh, uh, voucher number we can directly go to the uh, uh, bold system uh, dr ravi uh, actually i had a question uh, uh, is it possible for you to elaborate how they can uh, uh, even in some other session also how we can submit the sequence in bold because uh, people are uh, uh, somewhat well versed about the ncb database but uh, gold uh, bold database are some uh, for uh, for all it is not on a, a well versed site is it possible to uh, provide a, a, a online based uh, a demonstration on that yes sir we can do the online based demonstration uh, it is it is not uh, that much of uh, uh, difficulty but it how uh, 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 we need a very much very, very much patterns to do this patience okay yeah okay. patience okay. Yes. okay thank you thank you dr yes. yes. sir and one more question is also there one more question from uh, miss nidhi like uh, shakti your voice is not audible yes sir yes sir. i'll just no is it audible sir yeah yeah please like uh, she have asked uh, whether uh, species will have basic identification number uh, miss nidhi can you ask a clear clear can you clear clarify your uh, question as type error yes sir uh, good evening sir good evening Uh, sir, I wanted to know what exactly does the voucher number, uh, the voucher number means? Yeah, voucher number means your specimen, the specimen of your uh, sample. Uh, we need uh, at least three to five different uh, five uh, samples, uh, okay, same sir. same uh, animal or some same worm, anything. We need three to five. and we need to we need at least uh, some information about the uh, uh, genus level and or species okay. level this okay. is okay uh, they can provide uh, if you know only the genus they can provide genus also they will provide the voucher number if you know genus and species they will provide genus and species also they so can means, do both so means it's type of an identification number yes yes identification okay. number thank you very much sir thank you thank you thank you any other doubts okay if there is no any other questions uh, i think sir, uh, dr lata shiv you... yeah yeah ex- uh, yes you can go ahead uh, sir my question is that uh, Uh, because of mutation and all, if uh, the same species happen to have some other phenotypical or some expression-wise variation, and if it is being uh, found in two different uh, topo- geographical zones, like in some other continent or something, so still the barcode of the species will remain the same. That is my question. And also another thing is that here you have mentioned about cytochrome oxidase um, uh, one. but there is one more no that is rag1 uh, recombination uh, activating gene 1 so if somebody else is using that rag1 is it still hold the same barcode uh, number that's my question uh, actually uh, this is very good question ma'am actually uh, for example recently i, I had a, a small story 
uh, about this. Uh, uh, we uh, as from Anna University, they uh, they recently collected the samples from uh, Puli Cape Lake. Okay, they got the the same worm with the same key. Uh, I think it is comes under near us near us or something. Okay, the same animal. They the same uh, animal. They get it from the power uh, power plant related uh, place. Okay. They used to uh, release the, uh, the um, uh, hydrothermal water or something. The, that, the same animal, it, it changed so some of the keys. But uh, he, he advised me to collect the sample and do the barcode, but still uh, we don't have the proof uh, it have the variation or not. So we, we need to do that kind of study also. We don't have proof now. Uh, so, sir, in that case, uh, in the bold system or any database system, don't you think that there will be species repetition chances there? Yes, ma'am, it is there, but uh, that is not an issue because uh, the region also is, is changing, ma'am. Okay, so you are saying that based on the conserved region, what we yes. are using, uh, so that will still be able to give us the appropriate identification. Yes, one, I mean, actually, one more thing: you cannot submit the new species into the bowl system. You can submit only whatever the available in the bowl system. You can submit. For example, we have identified the Marpesa sanguni, but in in Chennai, they recently uh, uh, one scientist she uh, she uh, renamed that particular species into Marpesa madrasi. Okay. So we try to uh, submit our sequence with the name uh, Marpaisa Madrasi, but the bowl system is not accept that new name. They accept only the whatever they already published. So we won't submit the new sequence into the system. At the same time, uh, we won't submit, uh, we won't use uh, different primers other than CIVA1 gene. Because they the uh, in bold system they already have the list of primers. In that list of primer, uh, they uh, they never given other than uh, CO1 gene. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And there is one more question from Dr. Mohammed Tansari. Like uh, specimen voucher is is only for new species or already available species also we can deposit. Yes, they can, they, they can give all the species. Okay, I think, I think uh, one more uh, small suggestion, uh, this is Ansari. Okay, uh, so I think it is audible? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry for interpreting the question from uh, Elaine and uh, Dr. Ravi explanation. So whatever the geographical region, uh, that doesn't matter in the molecular taxonomy, whatever, whatever species or whatever uh, group of things we are doing. The only thing is the geographical variation will say the difference between the uh, particular uh, one or two point two percentage or three percentage. But the, the reality is we have the lot of subset of species because we doesn't know that exactly how many species are there in our environment because we don't have any baseline data. Okay, that is the real truth. We must be uh, accept that. So, so we are working for last 20 years in the field of uh, benthic ecology uh, in both uh, polygate and uh, nematodes. The thing is, the reality is we doesn't know that exactly how many species are there. So the repetition is common. Uh, so we need to be find out uh, where it is. That is the only reason the people are going behind that molecular uh, taxonomy uh, to prove that that is the same species. See, uh, for example, I have identified more than 190 nematode species. So I, when I submitted the species with the any name, uh, then but some person from Belgium that person is uh, saying that it was already reported. The same character or something, only one or two characters may, might be different. So for that, uh, those people saying that uh, we cannot consider to a new species or we cannot consider to the, that for different species, whatever we are proposing. 
so uh, i think this is the exact uh, thing we need to be come across with that first we need to be understand how many species are there then we can go for that uh, the molecular taxonomy that will be help us so this is my small suggestion uh, i think elaine asked that question so that may be answerable right is that okay yeah sir thank you thank you so much thank you dr ansari yeah. thanks for yeah, the yeah, clarification yeah thank you is there any questions or we can wind up the program no sir no questions in the chat box no hand raise okay okay if there is uh, uh, no further question uh, thanks for the patient listening of this talk and uh, uh, this is about the tomorrow's uh, sessions so one I, sorry to interrupt sir one question yeah. uh, lata ratnam ma'am is raising her hand i'll ask her to unmute. yeah please uh, unmute her ma'am you can speak uh, yes sir good evening sir yes ma'am uh more uh, well regarding this uh, geographical classification there will be also the environmental factors are responsible for this kind of uh, uh, change no sir like uh, the ma'am actually uh, yes, even uh, as uh, actually uh, uh, even before the answer from uh, dr ravi i just want to give some kind of clarification so when we are submitting any voucher specimen yes. also if there is if the same species or the same genus is available with the culture collection they will accept as the same species and genus which is already available there so they will uh, but but they will mark the uh, collection area here here only the geographical location will come so they can ma make another map that this species will available in such a location for that it will be work out in such a way whereas in the case of bold there also they are not accepting the new species because they will accept the uh, the, the the same species if they are again uh, providing in the bold database and with the geo uh, different geographical location also this will be very helpful so the distribution pattern will be uh, easily uh, available in the bold if we are working for the particular species of interest that's what it is uh, coming to the uh, geographical location uh, or any environment specific uh, location when we are submitting to any uh, for any anywhere in the voucher specimen or in the bold uh, sequencing okay so thank you thank you ravi is the i mean is my answer yes, is yes. right or yes. you can yes sir right sir yes, thank sir. you thank you thank you ravi thank you thanks a lot thank you sir